We'll offer these up later during worship. Let's invite Charlie to share his prelude. Good morning. Please rise for the call to worship, if you're able. On an ordinary Sunday, we come to worship God. On this day, like every other day, we seek to follow Jesus. On this day, we lift our souls to God's Spirit.
Join me in the confession of sin. O oh God, like Jacob and Esau, we struggle for rights. We grapple with others to give us our due. Contentment comes slowly when we don't get our fair share. We confess our impatience when others misuse us. We confess our dislike for those who deny us. Forgive our distrust that you will care for our needs. Help us to strive for equal justice for all. The good news is that God forgives us. Forgive others and forgive yourselves. First reading is from Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says our God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their con constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows, up, blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed the flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, 
and gently lead the mother sheep. Roscoe, Suzanne, and Charlie. Our second reading comes from Mark chapter 1, the first four verses. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, 
proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. It's the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Lord, open our ears to hear you. Open our minds to know you. Open our mouths to praise you. Open our hearts to love you and open our lives to serve you. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Christ's name, amen. Does it ever feel like that you've suffered more than enough? That you've gone through a time and like the psalmist, you have cried out, how long, O Lord, how long? a situation that keeps perpetuating itself, an uncertain time that just comes with more uncertainty, an ordeal that it seems never ending. Well, Israel felt the same way. And in Isaiah, we read that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. But God's word to this people who have suffered double for their sins is comfort. Comfort my people. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid. All ordeals come to an end. All suffering comes to an end. All trials come to an end. All doubts and uncertainties end in hope and truth. And so sometimes it might feel that we have suffered double for our sins. Sometimes it feels as if we have had more than enough. But God's word to us is still the same as it was to Judah, comfort my people. What can we do to prepare the way for the Lord in our lives and the life of this world? In Isaiah, we read, in the wilderness, a voice cries out, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God says that every mountain shall be lifted up and every hill, every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low and the rough places shall be made smooth until there was a clear path for the king to proceed. The image of that is a royal processional where people would go out ahead of the king and his entourage and prepare the way by making sure the king had level ground on which to tread. What are we doing in our lives to prepare the way? What valleys are there in our lives that we need to raise up? What mountains and hills do we may need to make low? What obstacles stand in our way of letting God have a way in our lives. The greatest obstacles we face are that of sin. Sin tries to get us to trip up and to block God's path in our lives. And so we must address sin head on. We must break old habits. We must confront old enemies. We must change our attitudes. We must remove these obstacles in our life so that the Lord has a way in our life that we can follow. Prepare the way of the Lord, the voice cries out. And it cries out to us still today that there's still much in our lives that we use to block God's pure path in our lives. But again, we are called to confront the obstacles. We are called to raise the valleys and lower the mountains 
and smooth out the rough places until God has a way in our lives that we can follow the way of truth and the way of life. In our temporality, what comfort do we take from the eternal word of God? In Isaiah, we are compared to grass, grass which withers and falls by the breath of God. We are fleeting. Already this summer, we have had so little rain that my front yard has turned brown. And it reminds me that the grass is fleeting. And what do we do in our lives that we don't turn brown and brittle and fade away to nothing? God says that we are temporary, that we are only here for a brief moment. And yet the word of the Lord stands eternal. And the word of the Lord is that of salvation. The word of the Lord is that of deliverance. The word of the Lord is that of hope. The word of the Lord is that of our Savior, Jesus Christ. That word stands eternal. We might be temporary creatures, but we are promised the word of eternal life. That there is a bit of eternity in us that there is a spark of the divine. And so we are called to remember and to hold up our temporality with the eternal word of God, that even though some things fade, the word of God remains, that even though life ebbs and flows, the word of God is constant. And so today we remember that we are but dust and to dust we shall return. But God promises us today eternal life. God promises us today life without end. God promises that God will be the same today as God was yesterday and God will be tomorrow. And so even though we are but grass that withers and fades, the word of our Lord will stand forever. Today we learn that God will fight for us, will rule every situation, and give us our reward and recompense. The people were promised that they would be compensated for all that they had suffered. Like Job, they would receive twofold for all that which they had lost. Recompense is compensation. And God's reward is God's blessing. God blessing the people even after they had suffered much that God would come God's self. The Bible says the Lord comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. God himself will fight for us no matter what our situation. God himself will rule with a mighty arm. God himself will reward us and will compensate us for all that we have lost. Our God is a mighty God and a mighty warrior. And in those situations when we feel defeated, we know that God will triumph. In those situations where we feel beaten down by life, we know that God will triumph for our God is a mighty God. God will never stop fighting for us no matter what. God is ready to bear God's arm and rise up to any challenge in our life, rise up to any foe, to cancel out any doubt, and to rise above any situation. The... Passage from Isaiah ends with the beautiful 
phrase, he will feed his flock like a shepherd. The image of God being our shepherd is one of the most beautiful in scripture. Of course, we have Psalm 23, which says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God as our God, as our shepherd leads us to green pastures. God leads us beside still waters. And yet God is also there in the valley of the shadow of death. God is with us always, shepherding us like a parent. God is always there shepherding us, fighting off all the wolves and showing us the places where we might graze abundantly, where we might be refreshed and where we might be safe. Jesus himself said, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. Jesus being the good shepherd reminds us of this image of he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. We will be fed by God's own hand. We will be provided for. No matter when we suffer want or need, God will be there to provide for us. God is our shepherd. Therefore, we shall not fear. Therefore, we shall not suffer loss. Therefore, we shall not wonder where the way is if we open ourselves and prepare the way for God to shepherd us to those green pastures and still waters. Today, we rejoice because God promises us comfort. Comfort my people, God says. God promises us comfort when we are worried. Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. God's comfort comes day by day. God is there to ease our worries. Even as we have many worries, Jesus tells us not to worry because today has enough worries for itself. Worry about one day at a time and know that God's comfort is there in the midst of our worries. So God comforts us when we are worried. God comforts us when we are lonely. In Isaiah 49, we read, But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palm of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. I have inscribed you in the palm of my hands. I am like a mother who comforts her child. Even when everyone else has forgotten us, God promises that I will not forget you. So when we are worried and lonely, we have God's comfort. We have comfort knowing that God doesn't forget us. We have comfort knowing that God knows what our situation is and what we need in that situation. In our loneliness, God is there. In the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. God is with us in our trials God is with us in our doubts. God is with us when we feel like no one else is. We have the eternal presence of God with us always. Therefore, we should take comfort in our loneliness, knowing that there is one who understands. There is one who gets us and truly gets us for who we are. 
In our loneliness, God is there. God promises us comfort when we are tired or weary. I love the way that chapter 40 of Isaiah ends. It says, he gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When we are tired or weary, God is there as our second wind. When we are tired and weary, God is there to fill us with God's strength and God's grace. When we are tired and wearied, God renews us. God lifts us up on wings like an eagle. A mother eagle carries her young on her back and teaches them how to fly. That's how God does it for us, is that when we can't seem to carry ourselves, God carries us. God lifts us up on wings like eagles, and we soar. We soar into great promises and great possibilities. And we all get tired, we all get exhausted, Life can be exhausting, and yet we have this promise of comfort for the tired and weary today. God says, bring me your tiredness. God says, come to me when you are weary. Come to me, all you who are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest, Jesus says. Rest is what God promises us. Comfort is rest. And so when we are tired, when we are worn out by life, remember that God's comfort is there, renewing you and lifting you up so that you shall run and not be weary, that you shall walk and not faint. God promises us comfort when we are discouraged. In Psalm 34, 18, we read, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Besides being exhausting, life can be discouraging. We don't get the advancement that we think we deserve at our jobs. We don't get everything we think is coming to us. We try to set goals and we fall short. We try to get things done in a day, but those fall over into the next day. We get our hopes up and our hopes are crushed. We get into situations that defeat us and discourage us. But God promises us comfort when we are discouraged. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. When we feel like life is crushing, God delivers us. God delivers us with the promise of hope. God delivers us with the promise of grace. God delivers us with the promise of of courage. God promises us that we shouldn't get discouraged because God's blessing is always near. That the brokenhearted are always whole because they are stitched together with the love of God. So God promises us comfort when we are discouraged. But comfort comes not only from God, Comfort comes from one another. We are put here to comfort one another. We do that through our prayers. We do that through cards. We do that through phone calls. 
We do that by being present for one another. And Paul tells us that we are here to comfort one another, though he uses the word console in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation or comfort, who consoles us in all our afflictions so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction, affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. As God comforts us, so too are we to comfort one another. We are to comfort the weary and the tired. We are to comfort the lonely. We are to comfort the discouraged. We are to comfort those who have given up on life. We are to comfort those who are worried. We are to comfort those who feel like they can't go on. We are comfort to those who are afflicted. This comfort again comes in forms and acts of tangible love that we show for one another. A church should be a house of consolation and comfort. We gather to remember how God has comforted us and yet we are called to comfort one another and our sorrows as well. We are called to be here for one another. And it's one thing I love about this church is that we are truly here for one another. When one of us suffers, we all suffer. When one of us rejoices, we all rejoice. Today we celebrate with our graduates. Today we pray for those who are battling cancer. Today, we celebrate life. Today, we help each other through life. Today, we gather not just for worship. Today, we gather to let each other know that we are here for them. Our presence here together reminds us that we are in life together that we do life together, that we love one another. Jesus promised us a comforter in the Holy Spirit. In John 14, he says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. There is great comfort in knowing that we have an advocate. We have an advocate before God, but we have an advocate in our life to stand beside us, to give us the strength, In Latin, the word comfort breaks down into cum fortis, which means with strength. And so it is with strength that we go into this world with the promise of Holy Spirit. Of all, Jesus Christ is our great comforter. We take comfort in knowing that he died for our sins and that we are freed to live in the freedom of Christ. We take comfort knowing that he suffered so that we might be freed from the freedom, that we might be freed from guilt and shame. He died so that we might know that death doesn't have a hold on us, nor does it have the last word. We take comfort knowing that Christ is there for us, We take comfort knowing that Christ will never stop fighting for us. That Christ promised that he would be with us always, even until the end of the age. 
So take comfort, my people. God will comfort you in your distress. God will comfort you in your doubts. God will comfort you in your trials. For God sent Jesus to be our comfort, to console us in life, to console us in death, and to console us beyond. Amen. Join me in the affirmation of faith. What is your only comfort in life and in death? You may be seated. Graduates to come forward. Sorry about that, Charlie. Nick and Anna both graduated from New Albany High School recently, and they are planning on going on and doing great things, and Nancy Eiton has a presentation to make to them.
<clears throat> Creator God, we thank you for the beauty of this day. Help us to rejoice and be glad for this is the day that you have made. It is a day that might come with its struggles, but it is a day full of joy because we have begun it worshiping you. We have begun it by being reminded of your comfort and love of us. Redeemer God, we thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ to die upon the cross. And with great power, you rose him from the dead so that that same resurrection power might be at work in us so that we might be freed from sin and unencumbered by the chains of death. Help us to confront the death-dealing ways of the world and live a life that is life-giving. Help us to embrace your grace and to extend your mercy and kindness to others. Sustaining God, you lead us down the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. You are our shepherd, and we ask that you help us be faithful and not wayward sheep. Yet we rejoice that you are the God who goes after lost sheep. And though there are times we give up on you and turn our backs on you, you never turn your back on us and you never give up on us. Sanctify us by your spirit and help us to be holy as you are holy. As a church, we thank you for our many blessings. We thank you for the opportunity to pack the bus. We thank you for the opportunity to hand out water to the homeless. We ask that you strengthen our bond, that you add to our numbers, and that you continue to bless us as a church family in this place where all are truly welcome. We pray for the churches of New Albany and that you strengthen our united witness, especially through our ecumenical association. We pray that we might share the hope of the gospel in everything we say and do. Help us to be evangelists and bring others to you. We pray for our nation and its leaders. We ask that you give them a spirit of cooperation and bipartisanship as together they work to bring this country to greatness and to do so on behalf of all people, not just a select few. We pray also for those who lead us on the state and local level. We pray for those who battle indecision and doubt. We pray for those who battle mental illness, especially that which goes untreated. We pray for our doctors and nurses who help treat our physical ailments. We pray for our psychiatrists and other mental health workers as they help keep us sane. We thank you for the wonders of medicine. Today we lift up our fathers who are here and who have gone before us. We thank you for their love and example and we thank you and ask your blessings on them on this Father's Day. We also pray for those couples who are struggling to bear children, those who are going through fertility treatment, and those who never had children of their own. 
Help them know that they are a nurturing presence and that they have an impact on the lives of those children that they come into contact with by being strong examples of a Christian life. We thank you for the wonders and miracles that you perform throughout our lives. Help us be mindful of the little blessings that come our way each and every day. Be with those who battle addiction. Be with those who are undergoing treatment for cancer. Be with those who are going through divorces. Be with couples who are estranged and those who are getting ready to be married. I ask your blessings on all the children of our community. I ask that you protect them and guide them and help them grow and mature. Be with our students and teachers during this summer break Give them a chance to refocus and rejuvenate and rest. Be with Jacqueline and I as I travel. Be with Tina's group in Panama and see them safely home. We also ask that you watch over Fran's nephew, Ed, as he travels in a very hostile region. We pray for Walter and his tests and upcoming surgery for lung cancer and Betty as she worries about him and his family as well. We pray for Vicki and we ask that you help the doctors find a solution for what ails her. We thank you for Reed's positive diagnosis. And again, we lift up joys for our fathers today. Give wisdom to the one who has a decision they need to make. Give courage to the one who is facing a trial and give strength to all of us on this journey of life as we try to walk in truth (coughs) and justice and righteousness and love. These are those we have named, Lord. Now in a time of silence, we offer our prayers to you. We do so all together. Give us wisdom to know that your answers come in your way and patience knowing that they come in your time. Hear us as we pray. Help us with confidence to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Together, let us give as we are able as our ushers come forward to collect the offering.
God, you are the giver of all gifts. Take what we are able to offer you this morning and use it to further the life and mission of this church and its witness to the kingdom in this community now and forevermore through Christ and in his name. Amen. God, in Jesus Christ, you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the light of Christ surround you. May the love of Father God enfold you. May the power of Holy Spirit protect you. And may the presence of God watch over you. And remember, wherever you are, God is and all will be well. Go in peace.